Well, it actually started uh, at, at a birthday party for my father. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Lonnie, who is the youngest of the three, he's Joe's oldest child, my brother Joe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were singing. My dad would always say, guys, uh, get the guitar, Jack, and we'll sing some pioneer music, Sons of the Pioneers, if you remember who they were. Mm -hmm. They were the most famous Western group ever that's ever sung. And so we were a singing family, and so uh, we'd get the guitars and all the people that would come to Dad's birthday. He was a patriarch in the Hannah family, mm -hmm. and so there'd be probably 50 to 100 people at his birthday party. So we would sing, we would sing these old Western songs. Yeah. And Lonnie, Lonnie asked if he could sing one with us. He was 28 years old, and uh, I said, uh, "You don't know this stuff, do you?" He said, well, I've been listening to you guys singing for about 15 years. I probably ought to be able to do it. Yeah. So we, he picked a song and we sang it. He thought it sounded so good that um, he uh, thought we ought, to, we ought to sing. We have sung all over the world. We've sung for royalty. We've sung uh, in Switzerland, Germany, Saudi Arabia, uh, Pakistan, uh, Yemen. <laughs> Can you believe it? had to have our songs translated uh -huh. and when we went to the Middle East we had to send every song to the Middle East every song they had to approve every song and they approved every song that I had written and uh, and so we did we sang all over the Middle East we were there for eight weeks um, we've Japan Germany uh, Mexico Canada everywhere we've sung Carnegie Hall we've sung with the major symphonies in, in the United States mm -hmm. But uh, no, it's really been fun, and uh, we've produced what 15 or 16 albums. Yeah. We've we've got we've got a gospel album or two, and we've got a Christmas album, and all the cowboy albums. Song I call it Songs of the American West. And the cowboys then in the 30s were still living in bunk houses if they were single, and if they were married, they had uh, they would live in a home. But right. the single cowboys, and most of them were. Uh, lived on, lived on the ranches, and they lived uh, the cattle ranches. Our school was right in the vortex of all of those ranches, <laughs> and every night after school, I would we would run down to the country store because we'd know the cowboys would be coming in to get a Pepsi Cola or something like that, or a, a, uh, you know a something sweet, and they would come in there with their, would, uh, you know, and boy did they ever dress. They had their chaps and their big ten gallon hats. And nobody's hat was the same. Uh -huh. They were all original, uh, different colored scarves, uh, boots with uh, different kinds of spurs. Each guy had his own unique spurs and the big high top boots. And when they would walk in the store, the sound was unique. That is, there was no sound like it. Uh -huh. the, the zip of the shafts as they walked and the ring of the spurs and the, snap, and the snap of the heel as it hit the floor and they would all walk around in there and gather things. And I would sit there as this little kid, and I'd just watch those guys, and then I would become one of them in my mind, because mm -hmm. they were so romantic looking. Yeah. Then I would run up the road about a mile and a half uh, in the opposite direction of my home, which was three miles that way. I would go up there and sit on a post and climb up on this post, and I'd watch the cowboys work the cattle. And I would be one of them. And how many years later, I started writing those songs when I was 56. Well, one day, a, a mother said, uh, Jack, have you ever heard of the Heart of the Horse Ranch? And I said, no. And uh, she says, well, my two boys are out there. They're uh, doing that uh, therapy. I want to know what you would think, what you think about it. I says, well, I don't think nothing about it. I don't even know what it is. He says, well, could you, would you go out there? So she gave me the phone number and I called Carrie, Carrie Adams, the secretary and the wife of the CEO guy. And uh, so I came out here and uh, told him I was coming, told him who I was, that I was a friend of this lady. And so I came out and they didn't put any, put on the dog for me. They just, they just uh, kept doing what they do. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of walked around, wandered around, listened, watched. And you know, it just blew me away. So I thought, okay, that's today. I'll try it again. 
So I, I did it again. Then I did it again. I walked up to him and said, now, I don't know him very well. He's a big guy, big burly guy. I said, you know, Mr. Adams, I'm gonna be on your board. I've never seen anybody in my life that was as equipped for what he's doing. It seems like that he was fashioned for it. Uh, he can't help it. Mm -hmm. He's so natural and he's good with horses. His personality is such, he, he, even though he's big and powerful, he has this tenderness about him that, that communicates this ease that he has in his personality, uh, spirit, it, it uh, impacts the horses. Guy Adams is a, he is a, uh, what's the word? Like, a, like you talk about a, a national treasure. He's, he's a community treasure. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I hope someday that this city, these two cities and uh, outlying areas will really grasp who this man is. He will never let us down. He will never let us down. And he will be here and, and uh, function in a capacity that I don't think too many men have that. And he has it. One soldier said, I haven't had peace. I've never known peace for 12 years. It just was not possible. Now I know what peace is again. Now I know what joy is again. I just love to touch the horse. I just love to curry the horse, talk to the horse, ride the horse. How does this therapy happen? I don't really know and I don't really care. All I know, it happens. You know that song, You Raise Me Up? Mm -hmm. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas, something like that. I am strong when I'm on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why it's so exciting to sing to an audience who has come because they know before they come why they're coming. They're coming not just to hear the Sons of the San Joaquin or Billy Thornberry or, or uh, Sonny Cuelo. They're coming because they too know that what we're doing out here is uh, uh, world class. It's uh, an, a world shaking mm -hmm. event in the lives of the mothers and the dads and the grandmas of these special needs people yeah. that we love.